Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. it, it is me that they, they neglected and rejected. It's All me right. that they don't want me to be their leader. So, Jesus, so God told Saul, Samuel, Samuel, look what you do. Since they're crying, and this is what they want, they want a king, so go ahead and give them what they want. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, y'all. But at the same time, God told Samuel, you tell the people what kind of king they're going to get. Come on, y'all. This king, he's going to take your children, and he's going to use them to work. He's going to take all your fields, and take all your money, take 10%, give it to them. So he's going to have a rule, a hard thumb rule over y'all. But this is what y'all want. Y'all want to be a monarchy? Y'all want a king? You no longer want to trust in me? So I'm going to allow your wish. You know, God will give you what you want sometimes. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. even, though, even though he knows it's not best for you. Mm -hmm. But they are so mindset, was so made up, that they want to be like the other nations. They want their own king. So God applied them. God, God appeased them, allowed that to happen. But here we go. When we find ourselves here at Jabez Gilead, in chapter, in chapter 11, we find that the messengers came to uh, give you a song. And told Saul about what was going on. What was going on, y'all? In the first verse, it teaches us that they had the Ammonite that came around and deceived the men of Jabez Gilead. Could you imagine waking up one morning and your house is completely surrounded by an army? Well, you just, could you just imagine me waking up in the morning and your house is completely surrounded by dogs or, or cats or whatever the case may be? But isn't that a strange question? We wake up in the morning and you see that. And what they did was they responded. What, what amazed me was that when the men of Jabez Gilead woke up and saw the, the army of Nahaz around them, they immediately responded they wanted to surrender. Come on, y'all. That was their first response. Yeah. They wanted to surrender. Right. Come on, y'all. So I don't want to encourage you today. No matter what your situation is, or what it may look like, or what it may feel like, don't be so quick to surrender and throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Yeah, we, we, we need, need not be so concerned. We need not be so ready to quit, throw in the towel, give up. Because that's exactly what the men of J.B.S. Gilead did. They saw the men, and the first thing they said was, King Dad, what can we, what we're going to do, we're going to surrender and come out until you give up. Right away, that was their first response. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. But then they asked, they asked, oh my God, they asked, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh -huh. The only way that I would agree for you to surrender is that you said all to me and allow me to pluck out they right eye. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't to, to, it wasn't to, to pluck them right eye. It wasn't to weaken them, but it, it, was, it was to reproach them. It was to embarrass them. Because, you know, when you're a soldier, they have the left hand, they hold the shield with the left hand. Or the eye. So the right eye and the spear, so if their right eye is plucked out, literally, they're no good for battle because they can't see. But they were so quick to give up. Come on, y'all. I mean, we, we got verses in our life today. We're struggling with things today. Your bills, your house, whatever the situation. But don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Yeah. Don't be so quick to give in. We need to stand and let the world, let the world know that for God we'll live and for God we'll die. Yeah. Don't be so quick to give up no matter what your plight may be. We're tired of Satan beating us. We are like to let Satan know that we need to whip on him. Amen. Come on, y'all. But don't be so quick, they were so, they were so quick to give up, to throw in the towel. But we thank God for the elders of the church. And the elders of the church came, I tell you what they asked, this is what we're going to do. He said, give us seven days. Come on, he thank God for the elders. Thank God for the wisdom. Give us seven days and we're going to set out and see if we can get some help. And, and, and they asked, you know, he's arrogant. He said, well, you know, I got these guys surrounding me. So I'll give them seven days. What's seven days? Sound very cocky to me, though. Come on, y'all. Yeah. You know, we got them surrounded. Now, I ain't no way in the world, bro. Back in the day, ain't no way in the world, I'm going to let you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I ain't, I ain't gonna, 
tell you, okay, man, I'll be right here. Go get your ride, whatever you got to do. I'll be right. No, no, I ain't letting you go nowhere. Come on, y'all. Come on, man. But they asked, I tell you what, y'all, y'all go, y'all go ahead, I'll go and take seven days, no big deal. You know, go on, do what you gotta do, you know, cause we got this thing. We got we surrounded y'all, all that. But he allowed him to do that. Wow. Can you imagine that? But then when they got to, to the city gate, to give you a song, and, and they told the people that the men of Jabez Gilead had been besieged and they were surrounded. Amen. They were being captured. And and, 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 and what they told them, that the right eyes will be plucked out, they will be destroyed. And then when Saul came out of the field, saw, saw the people crying. Come on, y'all, we need to weep for each other. They were, they were ailing and weeping because of the situation in Jabez Gilead. Saul said, well, what, what's going on? What, what's really the issue? Why are people wailing? Why are people crying? And he told them about the news of Jabez Gilead, the men of Jabez Gilead. And then Saul got angry. Come on, y'all. They said the Spirit of the Lord fell on him. And then what he said? The word said, when Saul heard these titles. When we hear stuff going on in the world today, how Satan is whipping our children, how Satan got our kids in the street, how Satan is controlling our lives, how Satan got people at the door for people, all this thing going on. We need to start getting angry and let the world know that we are here for God and we're going to stand for God, y'all. Come on. It's time for us. Yeah. It's time for us to stand up and show up for the fight. And Saul said to these people, look, y'all better show up for the fight. Because we got people that we know people today. Our community is in trouble. Our neighborhood is in trouble. People are things are going on today. We as a Christian need to stand up and hold up the blood stained banner and let the world know we're gonna show up for the but we need to show up for one another. We are in general issue. We are in general situation. But we need to show up for the battle. Yeah. We got to learn to answer the call 24 7. Be ready to answer the call to help our people, to help each other. We are in general with something, aren't we? Yeah. Man. Huh? Man. We are in general with something. Here, people answer the call. And the tribe, the, the children of Israel and the children of Judah, when they got the word, over 300. And 30,000 people showed up. Come on, y'all. We need to show up for each other. We need to let each other know that we're there for each other. If we're going to be for you. We got your back. We got your front. We got your side. We're here for each other. No matter what our needs may be, we need to show up yeah. for each other. We need to answer the call. The call is coming, y'all. But we need to be there for each other. That's what they did. They came together and support it and help the people out. Are we like that today? Huh? Are we ready to be a servant? Are we ready to be a servant too to our people? To God's people? Are we ready to be there for each other no matter what? We need to learn to be there for each other. Show up for the fight. Oh, bless his name. We thank God we need for you to show up. Thank you, man. So God, we thank God that they showed up and tell you what, y'all. And Saul told the messenger to tell the man of Jabez Gilead that by, by noon tomorrow, mm -hmm. just hold out, y'all. Yeah. You're going to help us on the way. So I, I don't know what else, whatever you're going through, you need to hold on. You can hold out to the midnight hour. I read somewhere the joy is coming in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta learn we can just hold out. Yes. And let God work. Because God told Saul to send the message that by noon time you will have help. But I want you to know, Lord, that earlier that morning, the 330,000 men of Israel and Judah showed up early in the morning. And before noon, they caught the Amorite by surprise. And by noon, the battle was all over with. All you got to do is show up and, and show out and God will give you all that you need. Thank God. Amen. I need to show up. I need to show up and answer the call. Mm -hmm. Are we willing and able? We are able to answer the call. Amen. But are you willing to answer the call? Who else do we have besides God on this earth? 
We have each other, and we need to lean and depend upon each other. We need to learn to answer the call. For no matter anybody in the church, anything that's going on, we need to come together, lift that person up, not condemn that person, but let that person know. They've been there for you. Yeah. And we all do this together. Oh, bless his name. Yeah. We thank God today, you uh, We thank God that somebody showed up. And I thank God that Jesus showed up for us, didn't he? Uh, did he show up for us when we were sinking down in the sin of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Showed up. Mm -hmm. He heard our cry. I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore. But God lifted us up. So we need to be there for others, y'all. We need to show up for the battle. Just want to thank God for Jesus. Thank God that he died for us. The early one Sunday morning, he got up. The Lord is going to encourage y'all to continue to encourage you that we as a Christian body need to answer the call. We need to show up for the fight. We need to be ready for the fight. We need to be angry. We need to have that righteous indignation. We need to be tired of what Satan has was doing, what he has done, what he is doing. Don't you know that God gave us power? Didn't Jesus tell we got power? Huh? We need to be whooping him. Not us, he would be us. Because God has given us power from on high. He said, the blood, plead the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. But we got power, y'all. Yeah. We got power to stand. Right. We got to trust his word. Trust that Jesus will be with us. Because he gave us all that we need. Mm. So just want to thank Jesus for what he's given us. And we need to understand, y'all, that we need to show up for the fight. Mm. We need to show up, be ready, answer the call. Yeah. Answer the call because somebody always in need. Yes, sir. And the call is right there in your home. The call is right there in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The call is right there in your job. Right. The call is right there in Walmart. The call is right there in Kroger. The call is right there. It's every day to us. We have the opportunity. Like the Japan's prayer, oh Lord, bless me indeed. And enlarge our territory. There's all kind of work needs to be done. But God needs and wants. He don't need but he wants willing participants. So are you willing to answer the call? Are you willing to show up? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And hold up that blood stain now? Yeah. I'm leaning on the Lord, trusting in him. Let the world know what he's done for you. So we need to answer the call. Yeah. So we thank God today, y'all. First of all, we need to understand that we need to answer the call. Be ready at all times. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children say. Amen. 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 Amen.